Welcome back everybody, it is me, an exotic llama, here with another build guide, the last of this week in preparation for the 3.0 launch, and um, yeah, this is going to be my build. Uh, it's leveled all the way to 100, and I'll show you what nodes that I would suggest dropping if you're not actually going to push that far, and uh, I've got two versions of it, uh, one being, you know, slightly suboptimal and the other being you know really expensive gear and i can show you just how far this build is going to go so let's get right into it what is it it's elemental ethereal knives l-e-e-k converting all of the fizz damage of ek over to elemental 50 percent is going to lightning the other 50 percent going to cold uh, and the Ascendancy is going to be a Berserker. Yeah, I've mentioned it in some of the other videos this week, but it is absolutely fantastic. A lot of people think it's overpowered. I really don't want it to be changed because it just hurts this build. I mean, you can do it as an Inquisitor, uh, but that means you have to Blasphemy your Warlord's Mark, as I've also spoken about before. And that just... it's not that fun. Like, it requires you to have a lower projectile speed, so you c can't clear as fast. Um, you can't run hexproof, you can't really kill hexproof mobs, or at least you can't get hit by them. Uh, yeah, so let's get right into it. What does it give you? It gives you the fantastic leech from Pain Reaver, cloaked in savagery for leech tanking. Uh, crave the slaughter for attack and movement speed. Those are kind of nice for shield charge, honestly. And uh, Aspect of Carnage, you know, effectively a 7th or 8th link. Uh, so, after that's done with, uh, I'm showing that I go here for life. I'm going to actually be leveling Asunder, as I've also spoken about before. Which is basically just taking, like, those nodes and probably these nodes. Or, um, yeah, you know, some various melee nodes that you get uh, while on the way up here. Uh, so, you know, you can get maces, you can use two-handers, one-handers. I'm going to be dual-wielding, so I'll probably get the axes and swords, the one-handed here. Uh, maybe some of these nodes. Uh, yeah, and then make my way up here. Uh, I'll get s I pick up just this one life node, uh, because even for four points of travel, it's pretty fantastic. These two nodes become 19% uh, life, and you get plus 20 max life and another plus 20 max life. Uh, so it's pretty great. Uh, but you come up here, I get a jewel socket, and these jewels are all going to be uh, Fizz Damage, Life, Crit Multi. Uh, so three mod, pretty reasonable. Uh, I'll get some Arcane Potency for Crit uh, with the spells, because it is a crit build. And uh, the whole Purity of Flesh Cluster. If you don't really care about Chaos Res, you can always drop these two nodes here, or even drop all of them, and just pick up more life down here. And I think you end up with a little bit more life in the end, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, but then you move over here into Witch, you get some life, some spell crit, this one power charge because it is efficient, connected to your tree, and spell damage for power charge is a great node. Uh, then you get the life over here because 4 points for 20%, it's always good. Uh, another jewel, Throat Seeker of course for the crit and multi. Uh, then these because they're actually really good life nodes, and then some extra spell crit uh, because these are also really good. Uh, assassination, of course. Some extra life. Add these two, because I didn't really have anywhere else to put two more nodes. Um, so, yeah, those would be cold if you weren't going for 100. Uh, then down here for Vault Packs, another Jewel Sockets. Some more, uh, well, Evasion, Life, and Fizz damage on that node. Uh, so these three alone are worth it for life, but this build is an Evasion build, and... In the end, it uses fizz damage, so it's just super efficient to pick up those three points. Uh, and you can also pick up these two for more evasion. Again, if you don't want chaos res, evasion. Uh, then you come over here, get acro, and all the rest for phase acro, heart seeker, jewel socket, and herbalism. And that's the whole build right there. So again, if you weren't going all the way to 100, I'll drop this right down to 90. Knock out these four points, because they're not really that great. And I'd probably call, like, those two, and, uh, at least one jewel socket. Because it's kind of unreasonable to ask you to get all of them. Uh, you could even call two of them. Makes the build a little bit cheaper. 
And then you'd pick up, like, uh, two more life nodes somewhere else. Do something like that, maybe. But yeah, you guys could figure it out, I'm sure. And uh, this jewel socket, though, is required for Ring of Blades. It is a EK Nova build. Um, and even though that's not the nerfed version there, and I'll speak about that nerf later, um, it's still quite good. Uh, yeah, so the nerf to the EK Nova Jewel was taking it from 10 additional projectiles down to 5. And I'll show you why that's not too big of a deal. So previously, uh, I believe, with the old EK Nova Jewel, you were firing 20 projectiles over 360 degrees. That's 18 degrees between each one on average. Uh, so you have pretty good coverage. But then, if you look at the new one, which is only 5 additional proj, uh, it's 360 degrees over 15. So, uh... Yeah, it takes you from 18 degrees between each one to 24 degrees, uh, which is a bit of a significant increase. You know, it's it's 6 on this 18. It's 33% more going from one to the other. Uh, but in the end, in actual play, it doesn't really that matter that much, uh, especially because the projectiles change a little bit. Uh, their trajectory changes with each cast. It's kind of randomized how far apart they are between each other, what angles they're firing at. Uh, so whenever I'm using Spell Echo, it pretty much gives you 100% coverage regardless. And uh, yeah, every single hit should be a kill. So, that being said, uh, let's get into the gear. I'll go ahead and put back on all of these points. Oh, come on. Those points, those points. And then I had a jewel socket and a jewel socket. And these two, just for some more crit and fizz damage. So, the DPS here at level 100 is uh, 730,000, which is pretty damn good. Uh, then if you look at the life total, it's also just under 7k. And if you're playing hardcore, you can definitely increase that by dropping some damage nodes. I mean, two small damage nodes here for two more life nodes takes you to 7200, you yeah, know. So, getting into the skills, it's Ethereal Knives, Spell Echo, Fizzed Lightning, then uh, Added Fire, Empower, and Faster Proj. Uh, now, Added Fire isn't optimal here, but it does make my coloring easier uh, for the chest that I'll be using. Um, so, yeah, uh, optimally, you would use Controlled Destruction, and it's a pretty big DPS increase over Added Fire. And it takes you from 730, pretty much, up to 790. Uh, but I don't really like that it lowers your crit that much, especially with only an effective crit chance of about 84%. I'd ideally want to get closer to cap just so it feels better. Uh, so yeah, I opt for added fire there. Also, ignite DPS, because lulls 2.3k extra. Um, also, in the end, whenever you're fighting bosses, you will probably have Arcane Surge up, which takes you up to 874, but you also will lose Onslaught, which wasn't even checked. So normally when you're fighting, you'll have Onslaught, which is actually 825k. Uh, it's going to be linked to Herald of Ice, because that's just, just, just great. It's something I heard Ziz mention on a stream today, or during his podcast with Ziggy, the Exiled podcast. Uh, linking Onslaught with Herald of Ice gives you permanent Onslaught, and, uh, that's just great for clear speed, especially um, whenever you're using shield charge and a spell. It gives you just so many good things. Uh, so normally you'd have Onslaught, but whenever you're against a boss, it'll probably go down. Uh, but Arcane Surge will come up, so it takes you to 875, 875,000 DPS. Uh, yeah, so assuming you're against a boss and you have that up, eh, you're pretty well off. But if you notice here on the links, I have Pierce, and where is that coming from? How do I have a 7 link? Well, I'm using Lionized Vision. This is something I rarely see mentioned, and that's probably because of the old CI meta of 2.6. You know, people running around with their EK Novas and 10k ES pulls, but whenever you go over to life, well, getting 100 max life and a 7th link is pretty insane. It's kind of hard to color, but it's actually only necessary to get four off, and it's only 160 strength required uh, on the items, so it's not going to be that bad 
especially if you use the Verici uh, jeweler method. Um, yeah, so I'm happy about that. Uh, I will definitely be getting that by like day two. I'm also using a Doriani's, uh, then a Spell Damage Spirit Shield with a super low tier, literally tier one lowest roll spell damage mod, a decent crit uh, spell crit mod, and a decent life roll. Uh, that's just to, you know, make it a little bit cheaper. I can also tune that spell damage up. Uh, Starkonjas, I don't have an enchant on it. Ideally, you'd get some kind of EK enchant there. And then uh, just life life and res move speed a plus one curse biscos because you know that's gonna be pretty expensive and uh, you'll probably have to pick up whispers of doom at least until you get there uh, but that's not too much to ask for because uh, you can just drop some life or some damage somewhere and uh, pick up the extra curse and it's almost always worth it uh, then I'm also using Belt of the Deceiver because 10% more damage to nearby enemies and taking reduced extra damage from crit strikes is just mm, it's glorious. Opal Rings with life, uh, you can get them even better, but ideally these are probably just going to be uh, life and res to cap my resists. And then I'm going to have a Life Flask here, which I don't bother crafting. A uh, Diamond Flask of Warding to remove curses, and then Alchemist Quicksilver of Adrenaline. At Ziri's Promise, because, you know, it gives you the Fizz and the Ellie, and a Taste of Hate. Uh, now, these are both the pre-nerfed flasks, so the number will go down a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. And, um, uh, yeah. This here is my build. Going to be racing for 100 with it. Uh, I may even change it up a little bit. Currently, I have a Lyra for the Crit Multi. And getting the two extra points, I'll actually test right now, takes me from 875... 835, and then if I pick up maybe two average damage nodes, 873 versus 875. So it's pretty much the same. But maybe if I drop these two, it'll also take me higher. Let's see. Pick up these three, it puts me to 874, so it's pretty much identical whether or not you take a Lyra. Swap that back over to Alira, and yeah, they're, they're pretty much identical whether or not you take Alira or the passive points, at least in terms of DPS, but the mana regen and the resists are quite nice as well, uh, so you'd ideally take Alira here. Uh, you might actually take Creighton in the end game if you get to where, you know, you can use like a Bright Beak or something like that, uh, something silly. Then uh, you can take Creighton for the attack, cast speed, and move speed. Uh, all of which will scale this character. Uh, it might be something that I respec into later, uh, especially if I upgrade to something like this, which is spell damage, added fire damage to spells, attack speed, uh, crit chance for spells, and crit multi. So it's a pretty good scepter. It's actually really good scepter. And then if I tune up the spell damage mod on this shield to maybe about right there, uh, yeah, it takes me to... 1,064,000 DPS, which is, which is pretty fun. <laughs> um, yeah, and ultimately at that point, you know, you can drop down to a Bright Beak or whatever. You can, I don't know, it just, do whatever you want. It is such a good build. Um, I hardly see anybody referencing EK Nova looking at uh, the subreddit for Path of Exile, looking at the builds that people are mentioning. People planning builds for 3.0. Don't see any mentions of this. And, uh, yeah, hopefully that'll give me an edge, seeing just how good this build is. Uh, and managing that much DPS while using faster proj, even. Uh, which can be switched for slower proj while you're against a boss, and takes you up to 1.25 million. Uh, yep. Yeah. So, that's my build. I'll be streaming shortly after this video goes up. I'm going to schedule it for about noon tomorrow, and I'll start streaming at about 2.30, uh, just 30 minutes before the launch. Just test stream settings and stuff like that, download the patch, and uh, hop in the queue. See you guys soon. Thanks for watching, and uh, hope to see you guys at the stream.